Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambodhasa. Welcome everyone. Um, today I would like to uh, discuss the, um, as you can see from the title, Moral Bricolage of uh, Speech. And in particularly thinking uh, speech or right speech um, in, in, in a framework, uh, if you like, theoretical framework for uh, speech in general, but uh, in particular, right speech. Um, within Buddhist uh, ethics uh, framework. So, uh, as what I'm actually presenting uh, today is um, the ideas and concepts that you are already familiar with. So, there's nothing kind of new to that. But by looking at various concepts in, an, in a more detail, the aim is so that we have a clear idea when we talk about and when we discuss speech in our academic writing. Specifically, um, as, as some of you know, uh, uh, at least three uh, students from SSBU, they are actually working on speech uh, for ME dissertation. And, and this is kind of uh, like a background so that, you know, the students, could, they can actually uh, conceptualize and think about um, uh, the idea. So, when we think about speech or right speech, this is a very crucial component within um, the Buddhist path, as we all know that. So, but here, on this slide, what it shows is that, okay, we have in the uh, Sutta Pitaka, we have um, two A strings. The Buddha talks about two A strings quite a lot, and also provides a middle way. Okay, and the first point here is well, when we find uh, when we look at the Sutta Pitaka, then we find that uh, the idea about uh, eternalism. That's one A string. Okay, so eternalism uh, is where, you know, um, for example, the soul exits for eternal. Or nihilism, where you, you don't exit after uh, this life, you know, the, the belief that's the kind of too extreme. Um, another one is whether it's everything exits or nothing exits, right? So this, this idea of uh, ati and nati. So that, again, it's, uh, you can find it in, in um, Samyutta Nikaya. And those are two extremes as well. In those contexts, you can see the first two points. Here, what we are thinking about is um, something like ontology, right? Ontological interpretation of, interpretation of uh, these two extremes. But when we then look at other suttas, um, including the Majjhagapavatana Sutta, in that the Buddha then talks about um, sensual indulgence, uh, and as one a string, and then self modification, so so uh, a string uh, ascetic practices, as another a string. And what we know is that the Buddha talks, talks about these kind of two extremes on other uh, four occasions apart from uh, the Majjhagapavatana Sutta. So again, here we are talking about the, the, the two extremes, but this one is to do with ascetic practices. So we can uh, uh, either fall into these two extremes. Another way to think about, this is a little bit more psychological, okay? So is um, blaming oneself. So, so blaming yourself is another extreme, or blaming others. Blaming others for what, whatever kind of uh, uh, inconveniences that 
uh, we may face or blaming oneself for um, failing to do the exams or, uh, and, and things like that. So what you see is that you see different levels of uh, um, a string or different ways of looking or thinking about a strings. Okay, and the Buddha, the Buddha, as we all know, provides that or claims that uh, uh, or show a way that there's a middle path, middle way. Um, in the Dhammacca Pavatana Sutta, we, we find that clearly, the middle way. What are the middle way? So the middle way is the Nova A4 path, Majjhima Patipada. So now this Nova A4 path in the uh, Dhammacca Pavatana Sutta becomes a little bit more specific, right? So because it's actually relating to this idea of this, uh, the specific factors of the path. I will explain a little bit more about, we will see the Nova A4 about what they are and so on. Um, but the main point here is about how the middle way or the middle approach or the middleness actually it's a, it can be taken as a general um, principle. Principle that actually guide us uh, when we are trying to avoid the two extremes, okay? Uh, even today, this morning, um, I, I read on Facebook that um, uh, Rata Siaraji, um, Dr. Nana Malabe Wansa, also mentioned about how uh, we can actually uh, provide a, or find a middle way. Uh, when he was talking about, uh, I think, uh, the current crisis. So, so here, that general principle has become very important. And according to Rupert Gettin, um, he, he, he said that this general principle actually can be dated back to, to, to quite a, uh, an old idea um, in ancient time, which I think is, is uh, you know, quite relevant here as well. But when we then look at the Nova A4 path, so here we all know uh, uh, the Nova A4 path and, and Rata Sierra uh, here as well, he teaches about uh, the Majjhakapa Watana Sutta and how the Nova A4 path as, as a wheel. So, so here, we have to take every factor as uh, in the related connections and, and how they, they support each other. So each factor becomes very important, but also important in the sense that it's allowing others uh, factors to um, become more kind of, uh, you know, to take effect as it were. So for example, if we, in order to, because we are talking about right speech, in order to have a right speech, then we, we need right intention or right thought and right insight. So, so wisdom elements also comes in, okay? That kind of uh, thing, I will explain a little bit more. But the idea here is, if you think of the Nova A4 path, as a wheel that take, will take you to the end. The end as in to the nibbana or liberation or, or free from suffering, however, much, however you want to define it. The idea is that it will actually lead us to the final goal. And that's a wheel, you know, it's like a vehicle. Well, actually taking you to the end. So that in itself is, is very important. I'm not going to um, explain individual uh, what the factors are because these um, knowledge, you, I'm, I'm sure you know that, but also for the benefit of uh, Venoa Sumana as well, um, 
uh, you can find it on uh, Google and so on. So, so, but um, another important element that I would like to highlight, which actually is talking about this, the means and the end. So here, the NOVA A4 path, yes, like uh, I, I mentioned uh, last week, I think, uh, during um, Writers Forum, that you know, we have mental qualities, important mental qualities when we are practicing meditation. So sati and samadhi and so on, which also um, comes in, in uh, Nova A4 path as well. Then basic idea here is the Nova A4 path is actually as a main, so, so you, have to, you have to use, so, so this is the, 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 the way leading to the end of suffering. So that's the means. You have also to use it. But in order to, not only to use it, but also once you have developed these factors in a perfect balance, okay, then they become the end in itself as well. In that, you, the, um, the Nova A4 path actually provides us uh, the whole uh, spiritual life in, a, in in entirety, okay. So the idea here, you we all know from here, sila samadhi panya. So we 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 find it in the nikayas as well as in the um for example. That you know you have to start with sila, samadhi, and then panya. So you 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 kind of progress, but. When you are actually developing these different elements of sila, samadhi, and panya, and to the extent that you actually develop the nova a four part, so, so correct view or right view, right intention, right speech, and so forth, if you can, or once you have developed it fully, then you achieve panya, uh, wisdom and morality and meditation; those also becomes the, the in, in terms of perfect balance. So here, as long as you kind of uh, use uh, the right the Nova A4 path in as a as a means, but also as an end, it's a perfect match as it were. So you have to develop it, but also you 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 also uh, become embodiment of th these uh, qualities. So so far, I I've only talked about uh, what the Nova A4 path and and so on. When we then relate back to speech here, we are talking about, of course, correct or right speech. Um, this is our main focus. But before we look at speech in particular, I want to talk about a little bit about uh, Buddhist morality as well. Okay, so we all know about sila, and and we've seen that sila actually plays a, a central role um, in Buddhist path, uh, and. Sila actually provides, or Sila as in, uh, Sila provides a foundation. But when we think about Sila, we, we have um, Jarita and Warita. So, so, so something that you refrain from doing, abstention. Refrain, refraining from stealing or killing, okay? And then, not only that, you have to do positive actions as well. Positive action, so, so here, you know, you know, doing dana or, or doing meditation uh, or do um, um, charity work and so forth. And sila, um, when we think about morality in, in um, Buddhism, it's also not only the spiritual training or spiritual development, but we can also think of it in terms of um, the impact on others. So, so this is about um, how our action, uh, so through body, speech, and mind, can impact others, uh, others and the environment uh, as well. 
So um, this is kind of a way of thinking about sila, uh, morality. And, and you, 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 this idea of zarida and warida, we have to keep that in mind. And one of the definitions about Buddhist ethics, uh, sometimes people forget uh, these two aspects. But though those, these two aspects go hand in hand. Okay? And the formula, very basic formula. So here, the, I would like to highlight here that um, I undertake the training room. So the training room as in, uh, you are also training yourself by refraining. So, so it's something that ne negative, but you have to train yourself or discipline yourself not to do it. Um, so the, the five precepts are um, um, the, uh, you know, in, in Theravada Buddhism or Theravada Buddhist societies, the lay Buddhists are expected to keep at least five precepts. But also we have other set of precepts as well. So here, um, addition um, uh, eight or ten precepts, okay? And five precepts, and then the, the difference uh, I've highlighted in, or is in uh, yellow uh, fonts. Um, they are a kind of, uh, um, in a way, a kind of, uh, highlighting something different points. And before we go any further, I um, perhaps we take Venerable uh, Banyadipa, uh, would you mind reading the, the, these, um, the first five precepts? The first one, abstain from taking the life of hardly sentient beings. Second, abstain from taking what is not given. Third, abstain from sexual misconduct or unchastity. Four, abstain from all speech. Five, abstain from fermented drink that causes loss of awareness. Okay. Six, abstain from taking home food at inappropriate times afternoon. Seven, abstain from singing, dancing, playing music, or attending entertainment programs, performances. Number eight, abstain from wearing perfume cosmetics and gardens. Nine, abstain from sitting on high chairs and sleeping on luxurious soft beds. Number 10, abstain from accepting money. Okay, thank you. So I have um, put two questions up here. Okay. Um, what we, we, we obviously we can't do pair work, but so I would like to open and, and ask the, the, uh, you, um, you know, what are the purposes of the additional precepts? Additional precepts meaning um, the, uh, from number six to 10, uh, as well as um, uh, and celibacy, so and chastity. So, any idea why, what are the purposes? Why, why do we have these additional ones? Um, and also, are they related to morality or are they about something else? Sancho in Dante. Mm -hmm. Putting us in favor of mental cultivation. Mm -hmm. Can you explain it a little bit more? So, so with, with an example, perhaps? Like for each, each precept usually refers to a proposed Nasa Sila. Mm -hmm. So it's actually um, taken by the lay people who are intended you know, to purify the mind mm -hmm. on specific days. Mm -hmm. So this devotion to the sila, mm. in fact, it's, it's to bring ourselves to a very simple lifestyle. 
a very a simple lifestyle, yes. Sim simplicity uh -huh. of mind and not a lot of getting involved in a lot of things like entertainment and some of the intoxicants uh -huh. can penetrate our mind. Uh -huh. In this aspect, you know, uh, mental cultivation can be uh, promoted. Uh -huh. Mm. In all of this, we can see that they are, they are principally they are uh, sensual indulgence, you know, activities. Uh, all of this means from six, six uh -huh. to, ten. To, to ten. Uh, high chairs, uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. so are they about morality? Mm. For so. me, it seems like the first five precepts are really about morality and the six to ten um, be supporting factors of the moral, morality, mm. where simplicity helps the mind to focus on that morality. Mm. Yeah, that, that's my opinion. Y yes, yes, I, 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 yes. Uh, any other? Mm -hmm. I think um, the six to ten is um, the purpose is to reduce the craving mm. and then the contentment. We have to develop the contentment as well. And one to five, it's uh, relate to the for the goodness of ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. so killing others is is uh, goodness for us and for the others. For six to ten, is the goodness only for oneself, ourselves, not relate, not directly related to the other people. Mm. Like taking not not taking food, no singing, no dancing. It's only the goodness, the development, the spiritual development of for oneself. Mm. And also, on the other hand, um, by following these precepts, we can reduce our craving, our kind of sensual pleasure, and mm. as well as we can develop the contentment as well. So, I, what I understand is all of all ten precepts are related to the morality, but six to ten is more specific if we really want to develop in our spiritual development. So, so uh, it, it's similar to what uh, Venerable Sumana said. So, the, from six to ten, they become a supportive for the development of uh, morality, uh, a supporting factor. Mm -hmm. uh, Venerable. Well, uh, as for me, I don't think so. Six to ten is not just a supporting factor, because you know, one to five. Mm -hmm. It's a morality in the sense that you, you become embodiment of. Whether you know it or not, uh -huh. you become a now returner. Uh -huh. You don't need to make better or make good up, you know. And you, you, you don't wear your what perfume to cosmetics. Well. That's what I've read when uh -huh. you become a Nagami. Uh -huh. So it's, it's a way of life, uh -huh. not just a supporting presence. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I think so. Uh -huh. uh, it's a very interesting uh, discussion, but I also want to highlight here, so abstaining from singing, dancing, playing music, and, and so forth. Um, I'm not sure whether you, um, whether uh, you are aware of, um, uh, you know, like um, how to define right livelihood, which is one of the, the uh, the fetters here, okay? Right livelihood. Right livelihood, uh, as you all know, is defined by abstaining from what? Abstaining from? Hmm? 
<laughs> round livelihood. Uh, yes, uh, very clear. What are the round livelihoods? <laughs> uh, selling me poisons. Uh, yes, uh, human trafficking. Uh huh. Um, anyone else? Yes. Uh huh. Um, but also, um, although this is uh, within Myanmar culture, right, right livelihood or round livelihood um, is actually related to, say, you know, like uh, actors and dancers and, or singers um, or the, uh, people who are in performance um, uh, uh, professions. They are regarded as wrong livelihood or doing wrong livelihood. Uh, and at, so here, the point then becomes, uh, goes, goes back to this idea about what is morality and what is not morality or wrong, right or wrong. Can you see? Uh, so it's, uh, uh, this is kind of very ambiguous as well. Um, one of the reasons why, as you may know, some of the, uh, our uh, Seattle's from Myanmar uh, also said it. Uh, if you are a performer, uh, say, uh, you know, um, the bin there, for example, then they, they would say that uh, you're, you're in, in doing wrong livelihood. You're doing wrong livelihood. Uh, uh, and the reason that they usually explain is that because you are actually encouraging craving. Okay, encouraging craving, so, so uh, arousing and, and so forth. So again here, uh, it becomes uh, quite tricky how to define uh, Buddhist ethics. So it's not straightforward way. I think it's here um, we can, uh, from what, we, what you said and from the discussion, um, the first step was, okay, these uh, additional precepts, they are to do with ascetic life and, and simplicities and how it will support, okay? So, of course, if we think about um, this kind of, cultivating uh, contentment and, and so forth, then yes, that's, I think that's one level, if you, if you ask me, okay? That's one level of understanding. But then again, I also mentioned here how the Nova A4 path is also uh, a means, but also an end as well, so, so you become the embodiment. So if we think about it like that, the precepts, they are the means to develop spiritual attainments and, and so forth, okay? So the idea is that not only they are the means, but also they are the end in, in itself, which, is resonates, which resonates with uh, Venerable uh, Nandobasa's point because then you, you then say that, okay, they are the morality because it's, you have, you become an embodiment once you have enlightened. So again, this idea of uh, what are the morality and how we define it and, and so forth, I think it's happening at different stages, okay? Um, and different level of understanding. We can, we can draw out different uh, ways of inter uh, interpretation, but also understanding the path in a more uh, in-depth way. Also, under not only understanding the path, but also understanding simple, um, I say simple, but uh, simple um, precepts, like five precepts or eight precepts or 10 precepts. But within that, what we have, what we can, or how we can unpack the complexity of the uh, Buddhist morality is quite deep, okay? So it's operating at different levels. Um, when I usually uh, kind of give this lecture to um, a student in, in, um, in the UK, 
they are amazed by uh, something like um, sitting on high chairs and sleeping on luxurious bed. <laughs> they always ask, why not? Why, why can't they do that? You know, and then for them, that would be kind of, it's not about morality. It's not, it's not about morality because it's, it, you know, you're not, you're not harming others. Okay, you're not harming others. But, uh, of course, that is true at one level. But if you then kind of take this into account of interrelationship between different elements of sila, samadhi, and panya, then you, you have to actually kind of, you can see why it is there. The point of uh, why we, we you know, um, um, those who are observing eight precepts or ten precepts cannot sleep on high beds. Right, uh, now let's look at speech then. Speech, right speech. Uh, again, here is um, talking in terms of uh, refraining from uh, false speech, um, divisive speech, or uh, hurtful speech, and idle chatter. So, so these are kind of four ways of defining what is right speech. So it's, it, again, it's about uh, abstaining from wrong speech. But in, in round speech, you can also classify in terms of uh, whether it's covert speech, uh, as in kind of you know something that's done behind uh, other other people's back um, and and spreading gossip or things like that, and then overt uh, hard harsh uh, speech. So this is about abuse and kind of very negative uh, criticism and, and things like that. Now I'm looking at Venerable uh, Janeda. Uh, so, so when you think about uh, white lies, these are kind of very useful way of thinking about speech. Okay, so so uh, try to try to think about it in that way as well. Um, different types. Okay. Uh, the question then is, what about silence? Oh yeah. Uh, there was one important saying: um, you cannot not communicate. Uh, meaning, silence equals also represents something in, in the world. Um, mm. so I would say silence can also be right or wrong. Mm. Um, however, I would expand it to right communication rather than right speech, because silence not necessarily represents speech. But mm. in certain situations, I would say a silence can be wrong, mm. such as uh, not. Helping others in need, or silence can be good if you don't have the right words to say. Mm. Uh, yeah. mm. To say something to add value to the conversation. Mm. Mm. So, um, uh, in in that sense, then how 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 can we also what else um, or how else can we define um, right speech or right communication? So we are talking about, um, uh, okay, there are certain times that it's the right moment to speak and the right moment to, or, or the right way to speak as well, uh, right? Um, but also, uh, if you stay silent, then at the right time, when you have to speak or when you should speak, then that's not also a correct way, right? I think when, mm. when one needs to tell the truth, mm -hmm. then you should speak rather than keep silence. Mm. Yeah, if you are seeing others that are going to be punished mm -hmm. wrongly, then you have to speak if you know the truth. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Another a, a example is also because if we if we then look at carefully the the motivation or the intention. So now here we're talking about um, 
karma or chitana, right? Um, the chitana behind uh, wrong speech, like false speech or, or divisive ones, they are they come from um, dosa, so so not 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 uh, with the right intention. Um, and then silence can also come from where? What kinds of things? Silence can be noble silence when you are in the real private investigation. Yeah. Or uh -huh. sometimes there are stories where one would have blamed its disciples for being silent mm. the whole retreat for not communicating with each other. Yes. There was. Mm. It depends on the situation mm. and your intention. Mm. So when you are in the meditation, noble silence is acceptable. But in the, in the, in the, in the communication with other people, and in, in, in the situation that you need to speak out, mm. Another an, another thing is that okay, if we are then you know, uh, if we don't speak when we need to speak, it also come could come from uh, a place of fear. So out of fear, you might remain silent, right? So that is in itself also kind of not wholesome. So uh, you you can see here. Um, the, the kind of motivations and, and the, the chetana behind it, okay? Uh, that's right, you've been kind of talking with, uh, about uh, in... Um, the Buddha actually encouraged positive speech, right? So here, when I was... Sally, do you mind reading? One speaks through and hears through. is trustworthy. Enjoying harmony, delighting in harmony, rejoicing in harmony, a speaker of words that promote harmony, speaking words that are gentle, pleasing to the ear, lovable, going to the heart, courteous, uh, desired by and agreeable to many. One speaks at the right time, speaks on what is fed, what is good, on the Dhamma and the Vinaya. At the right time, one speaks such words are worth remembering, reasonable, moderate, and beneficial. Okay. So in this par passage, uh, what other kind of... Um, uh, it, can we identify any other uh, uh, right factors uh, from the Nova A4 path? What, what other things do you, do you need in order to be able to practice such uh, kind of uh, positive speech? So now we are thinking about um, how we can relate the Nova A4 path to the positive speech or right speech. How how the um, kind of uh, supporting factors? Um, another, in other words, um, can, can we know what is truth and what is not truth? How do we know what's truth? I mean, that's the, the starter. Yes, so here, um, right speech, in order to, um, uh, as we all know, uh, perhaps Venerable uh, Sumana will also know that, um, you know, when we talk about karma in Buddhism, what is the first thing that that leads karma? 
Huh? Pollution. Pollution is what? Zedana, <laughs> yes. Zedana is what? Zedana <laughs> 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 is intention. We are going in this kind of, but I just about way. Is 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 the mind, right? So here, mind as in you, you have to have a right intention or right thought. Uh huh. So, so again, uh, that's, that's why, uh, you know, the, the forerunner of, of you know, the mind is the forerunner of things, right? So, chitana. And, and so here, you have to have a wisdom element, right thought or right intention, right view or right insight, you know. So, again, this one, we can see that you have to have panya element. Or, or factors into in, in this. Not only that, uh, like Venerable Sumana said, uh, if you are not mindful of your own action or your own thoughts, then can you can you can you can you make positive speech or would be would it be negative speech? I think if when a person is not mindful, even like intelligently, we have the right view. Right to do so, but then if at the moment that you are not mindful that the speech, even you have right view, but you might not speak the right speech. Mm. Mm. When you are not mindful, the intention it might not be a right intention. Mm. Maybe out of um, jealousy that you speak something. Mm. When one is not mindful, mm. though you know it's not correct, but at the moment you will just. Make a wrong speech, mm. So here, um, then we have sila as in you know, by practicing right speech, you're practicing uh, sila, or you're practicing mor morality. That's one way to think about it. And then you have to have uh, right intention or right insight. All right, so that's a panya, so coming together and supporting. And, and then you have to have right concentration or, or samadhi. Okay, so, so again, all um, uh, three elements or three aspects actually coming together and supporting in order to, to, to produce this kind of beneficial um, um, communication. Okay, so you you have very much kind of theoretical framework. Now, now we what we have talked about is kind of in theory what would happen, you know, um, and 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 how we can frame it within the Nova A4 path, for example. Okay, and then now let's look at moral uh, bricolage. Okay, so. Uh, N n don't read the first uh, uh, the um, uh, the text in the uh, white background, but also I want to point out the last uh, point. Um, so ideally, precepts or the rules and, and, and things like that should be kept all the time. But in t in practice, it's we know that it's not uh, possible. Okay, and that's where Venerable Janinda's uh, um, dissertation comes in, white lie. So how do we find, how do we define white lie? And how, how can we think about that? Okay, so the idea is that you have an idealism, so you, you have an ideal approach, but also pragmatism. So, so what are the uh, pragmatic way of uh, how Buddhists deal with this kind of moral di dilemma, okay? And, and bricolage, so uh, perhaps, Venerable uh, Sumana, would you mind reading? Uh, yeah. the, Oxford. the Oxford English Dictionary defines bricolage as the construction or creation from whatever is immediately available for use, an assemblage of haphazard or incongruous elements a moral bricolor, according to Stout's 1988 definition, is someone who engaged in selective retrieval and eclectic reconfiguration of traditional linguistic elements in hope of solving problems at hand. Moral bricolage is, uh, in his 
this sense is the process in which one begins with bits and pieces of received linguistic material, arranges some of them into a structured whole and leaves others to the side, and ends up with a moral language one proposes to use. Thank you. So here, this is actually talking about what? How do, how do you understand it? Uh, and how do you understand it in the context of what we have just said here? So um, the, uh, the moral dilemma as well as the, this tension between uh, idealism and pragmatism. Which, uh, by the way, as uh, Ciaro's, Rita Ciaro's uh, thesis is about that, uh, that concept. Find it. Mm -hmm. and, we pile up, mm. up. and then it says, well, actually it's uh, structuring, breathing them into a structure and also taking certain bits and arranging in a structure. To me, it's already not bricolage. <laughs> Okay, yeah, uh, any other views? Yes, th there's, there's that element of um, almost like a paradox, mm. paradox. Uh, but then again, uh, um, uh, as you may know, uh, uh, how, how do we find morality in, in, you know, kind of in general and in uh, philosophy? then it's also uh, kind of very tricky. Um, so, so you can have kind of normative uh, kind of approach to morality or ethics, or just a, a descriptive one, um, how uh, people practice morality or ethics uh, is also another one. So here, the idea uh, here is actually talking about um, what we might call descriptive uh, ethics, where okay, you have ideal state. Okay, you in in an ideal one, you won't actually tell white lie. Uh, however, there may be some uh, situation or circumstances where you you uh, think that, or you 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 uh, um, you make an assessment of that that white lie might be appropriate, for example, then this idea of uh, collecting and then kind of making a structure, making an argument, for example, in, in a way that's kind of more of bricolage, in a sense that um, it allows for this kind of primitive approach. So, so of course, from a kind of very, uh, it depends on how you define ethics. As well. Mm. Uh, I, I found another definition of break mm -hmm. and it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Can I read it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> According to the French social anthropologist Claude Levi Strauss, the artist shapes the beautiful and useful out of the damp heat of human life. Mm. So we use we use our life more, more, many, fat, more fat is more beautiful. Around us, mm. like that mm. So, so compared this artistic process to the work of a handyman who solved the technical or mechanical problems with whatever materials are valid. He referred to that process of making do as bricolage, mm. a term derived from the French word bricola, mm. meaning yeah. to pattern about and related to bricolage. 
the French name for a juggle of traits. So Ricola made his way from French to English during the 1960s, and his knowledge for everything from the creative uses of leftovers, like culinary recollection, to the coupling together of disparate computer parts and technical recollection. Mm. So we, we can use in the cooking or in the technical, like when we use the, I mean, the things that are not useful anymore, but we make use out of it. Mm. Uh, what about, so, so now we are talking about um, how we can uh, kind of uh, create or, or, or make an argument using things uh, around us, right, uh, from our environment and so forth, okay. Uh, what about this idea of upaya? Um, uh, uh, can anyone explain what is Ubaya? <laughs> yeah. To suit a purpose, um, even when what? Uh, Think about so Buddhist it's ethics. It's but you know what? This is a controversy. Like, you know, even the what the the Theravada, the Theravada things about skill building, do not include white lines. Mm. Um, on the other side, on the uh, some of, some other school. Why lie? It's actually, actually it's a uh, skillful means. Even the Buddha knew. Hmm. So it, it, it's, it's an age debate. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should tell Vanuatu Nina about that. <laughs> it's an age debate. <laughs> uh, can you explain a little bit more? Uh, elaborate on that? Great body. So mm -hmm. Even even the, up, the the four stages of enlightenment, it, it's not complete yet. So this is this creates a big controversy. Mm. So so here, one thing is about how um, a kind of according to different uh, Buddhist tradition, you 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 uh, you you define. Uh, you know, or you you think about uh, white lie or um, skillful means and and things like that. Um, so so that's um, also another thing that um, uh, we need to keep in mind. Uh -huh. Whenever it says in the Mahayana, skillful means always connected to two elements: mm -hmm. the wisdom and compassion. <laughs> this is the 
these are the, the, the core, uh, mm -hmm. the core actors of uh, bodhicitta. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, that's right. Uh, um, well, that's another debate. Uh, uh, did, did you have? Yeah. I'm not sure if I understood correctly, but it seems like saying the ends justifies the means, but the means justify the ends. When, when uh, white lies are used to an ultimate goal of helping someone find uh, wholesomeness and compassion, mm. um, that's what I see here the moral privilege, where mm. we know what the rules are, mm. so we might use some bits of it Yes, that, that, that's right. So, so the means actually justifies the end. So here, um, uh, you know, in terms of um, uh, Buddhist ethics, that, that's also another debate, uh, a lively debate in, in, in Buddhist ethics as well. So whether the means actually just justifies the end. Um, and this idea, more bricolage, is about the, 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 this uh, ambiguous uh, or dilemma state between uh, you know whether uh, we can bend the rules or break the rules in order to achieve uh, whatever that we want to achieve. <laughs> Shelly, Sangamita. Just sort of blame me. It's, it's fine because we need to be in the right mindset. Mm. Not, not to go too far. So you are a little bit more like Tirawadin. <laughs> uh, again, now I want to go back to here because uh, I, I said that, okay, uh, the Nova Evo path is the mean as well as the end, right? Uh, of course, this, this framework, if you follow that framework, um, I, I think that it's, we have a very, uh, uh, narrower kind of framework within which we can navigate or we can kind of assemble the bricolage, right? Because then here, in the way that I have presented here, means and ends, they, they, they come together at one point, right? Over there, you can kind of um, play around with the means in order to get the kind of right result or well-intentioned result. Okay, so again, this is also uh, another kind of moral dilemma or ambiguous ambiguities that uh, you know we can talk about in research. Okay, so one of the things that I would like to highlight here in, in with this lecture is that there are different layers of understanding, but also it depends on which framework you 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 work with as well. So are you actually kind of uh, very uh, idealistic and then saying that, okay, morality, you, you can't really kind of break any rules, okay? However, interestingly, uh, we have all the um, bakus here and you, at the end of the rains retreat, what do you do? Mm. Mm. And so if we then think about that in relation to what we are talking about here, how do you understand it? Or can anyone, first of all, can anyone explain clearly what Bawayana is? Uh, so that Venerable Sumana can. Mm-hmm. 
And in a way, we can think about it like a positive speech, which we, we, we saw uh, earlier. Because here, uh, you know, if you had an intentionally or for some reasons, if you had broken some rules, then you ask, you say that, and then you ask for forgiveness. So this is uh, adult kindness in many ways, right? So, so, so again, here, um, uh, I think I would go as far as in saying that even within Theravada Buddhism and Theravada's Vinaya rules, it also allows for that kind of um, <laughs> breaking the rules to some extent, as long as you, you acknowledge that, right? So that's also another uh, important point. Mm -hmm. uh, any more? Uh, questions or anything. Uh, I, that's, so so uh, for the benefit of Bernabe Janeda, what I would like to highlight here is, okay, so you have uh, Chetana, that's one thing, right? Upaya, another key concept. The Nova Eightfold Path, that's another thing that uh, is very important when you think about what white lies is and how to think about that. Um, and not only that, this idea of moral bricolage. So, so how do Buddhists in, 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 in practice uh, deal with various pressures actually coming from? So can you always tell the truth? Uh, you know, what if that truth actually harms others as well? So, so there are different ways of thinking about it. Okay, so I uh, I would stop here, and we have time for question and answer as well. Any questions or? Or rather, I, I should have questions for or for actually being on Twitter as well because you, you're talking about or you're working on on uh, 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 confidence, right? Uh, and speech in children. Any other, any? Yes, I, I know it's it's it's, it's uh, to, to digest and to make peace with it. Uh -huh. True, 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 true. It's, it's, uh, um, this this kind of uh, this uh, not enchanted, disenchanted. You know that this kind of um, uh, deflation in the in the kind of From mm -mm. To reality. Reality. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I, I will uh, share with you uh, one, uh, one thing, which is um, I did more research uh, in terms of right livelihood. And um, one of the, the ways of uh, dealing with or, or, or kind of how Buddhists 
actually comes to terms with uh, what is regarded as right livelihood, for example. Um, I interview kind of, you know, lottery seller and, and things like that. And for him particularly, he said that, okay, he knows that what he's doing is not right livelihood because he's actually getting uh, people in debt uh, by selling these kind of uh, Thai lotteries and, and so forth. Okay. Um, however, he then say that, okay, at some level, he's doing right livelihood because he's actually trustworthy and he's reliable. So he will actually pay out if he needs to pay out uh, to the you know, customers. So in that way, in his mind, I think um, from kind of psychological kind of uh, undertone, is that for him, that's, he's doing right livelihood uh, because he's honest and he's trustworthy. Um, and he, he does all, all kinds of um, uh, charity work and he, he, he goes on meditation retreats and so forth. So for him, it's pretty much kind of, you know, I'm a Buddhist, I, I practice various other things, except that I, I sell lottery tickets. Um, so that's also another interesting thing. So here, again, speech as well. So right speech, what does it mean? You know, how do, uh, how do uh, people try to develop these kind of right speech within the framework of um, how they understand what, what five precepts are? It's also very interesting research. Mm -hmm. Yes, Paul? Uh, if you don't have positive thinking, yeah, then? Positive so what do you think? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> sometimes it's, I think it's, if it doesn't have the positive, uh, positive, thing, a positive thinking, to speak oh, and positive thinking, so that I think it's very not easy. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, 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 um, uh, I explained it earlier that you need a positive or right uh, intention or right attitude or right insight. Those kind of uh, mental qualities, they are important. Okay? Uh, they are important. So, so you need to have a, a sense of wisdom uh, in order to be able to, 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 to have this. Wisdom here, I think what you are saying is uh, right attitude, okay? So, so or, or positive attitude, positive attitude to life, positive thinking, positive way of uh, understanding things. So, so if you don't have that, um, you can't uh, practice this. Why? Why? Why do you think it, it, you can't do that? <laughs> but my question then is why? <laughs> why? Why? Because I didn't see about it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 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 Why is uh, attitude uh, important? Or attitude or right view is important? Right. Any other question or comments? I think the money is important. Uh -huh. Just now, what um, you said, wisdom is the positive attitude. Because 
for example, it, the mind is like a filter. If you do not have a positive attitude, and then even the good thing comes towards you, you, the mind will distort it to negative. And then, as far as you think in negative way, and then the things that you do, the words that you speak, the action, all will go different direction. Mm. So it's, it's reflect, um, your action, your speech reflects the, the, the mental state. I think uh, Ratasiara would be able to explain more about that. <laughs> uh, so, uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I really like that filter concept because originally the, the saying goes your thoughts become your speech, your speech, your actions. But the thought derives from your original attitude, I think. So there's even one more layer to it. If mm. your mindset is positive, you have a positive thought. Mm -hmm. That's how it actually starts. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. It's it's um, the the um, the attitude or the perception. Um, so so in in various kind of texts, uh, they also talk about the importance of uh, perception and how different layers, especially um, within the context of meditation practice, how you. Uh, reverse your uh, different perceptions about yourself, but also about others. Uh, how you actually identify you as a as an individual, but also in relation to other, as well as um, uh, different uh, um, kind of labels that comes with that. Also, so so um, when we look at uh, Buddhism and the teachings on the mind, uh, there are different layers. Uh, definitely, and and it's very interesting. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I'm thinking about the sign language. I think you have two sign language. Okay. One sign language is the uh, if one man has done something wrong, and then if the first man comes to arrest him, ask him something, and he doesn't want to say, this is a one sign language. Because that he doesn't want to uh, be clear the, the secret behind. Can you explain the second second one a little bit more? Voting. If you agree, you stay silent. Uh -huh. Hiding something. It's the same idea that Venerable Nanobasa mentioned. So, so, so there are certain uh, situations where noble silence is good. So, so in the, in the um, kind of uh, voting system, you know, <laughs> that that clearly is is a good silence. Um, but in other case. You know, it's something to hide or something to deceive others. Um, also, it's, it's uh, an, another uh, kind of, uh, uh, um, it's not a good one. Uh -huh. And that, that's why here, when we, when we read something like, um, you know, at the right time, one speaks such words as are worth remembering, reasonable, moderate, and beneficial. So, 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 you know, uh, although here um, one speak, one doesn't also need to speak as well. So if the right time, if there is the right time. Okay. So, um, yes. Any other question? Mm-hmm.
when I listened to the Venerable Jaminda's uh, presentation, white line. So I am thinking the story of the Kisa Gaudavi. Mm -hmm. In the story of Kisa Gaudavi, the Buddha, uh, the uh, Kisa Gaudavi asked the Buddha, so is there any medicine for my son to uh, take his life back? Then Buddha replied, yes. Bring, bring, bring his life, yeah. So the Buddha replied, yes. Yes. Yes, I have the medicine. But um, what I understand is, uh, from the sila point of view, from the morality point of view, this is white line. Mm -hmm. But from the panya level, panya point of view, the Buddha has the sukha dog, the, the, the qualification, the highest um, right speech. The Buddha has the highest level of the right speech, the sukha da So it's a... Uh, that's why I think if we... Um, how, how shall we see that scenario? Mm -hmm. Is Buddha telling white line? <laughs> or is Buddha... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we have many perspectives, I think. Ask someone who's doing <laughs> a specialist research on that. <laughs> I think that the Buddha in this context, but he knew that he, given that Kisa Kotama would never be able to find the master skin from a household without his help. No people and no relatives to come from his parents. So, in that sense, I, I don't think it's really telling a lie. <laughs> it's like giving you, okay, you know, if you really, really, really want to try it out and then try it. Mm. Psychological teaching, I think. Mm. Know, this is the Buddhist counseling. Mm. The Buddhist guide is performance based counseling. Mm. So, Buddha, uh, he accepted, uh, he encouraged her, he motivated her in a way of like, okay, you have medicine, mm. go and find something. Mm. Like that. So, she, is, she was motivated. Mm. So, um, I think at that um, story, we can look at the volition. Mm. The intention of the Buddha. Mm. If we look at the intention and the, the purity of his, I mean, mind and wisdom, mm -hmm. so this is surely not a white line. Mm -hmm. So, but if in that place, if there is an ordinary person, how can we think? If it's just an ordinary person, not the Buddha, maybe we may think of like this uh, is a white line. And um. The, the idea of upaya um, is also in Theravada Buddhism as well. So, so uh, that's one way of thinking about it, I think. Uh, here, of course, one of the kind of, in, in Mahayana Buddhism, one of the kind of way of uh, thinking about upaya is usually, um, uh, you know, you can break a, a, a precepts in order to achieve a greater good. Mm -hmm. But here, in this case, that rules stay applies in that Kisakorimi then ends up uh, having attained an, an arahaship, right? So that's a greater good. Uh, however, um, it's also very, the Buddha has been kind of, I think, very being skillful. Skillful in terms of, um, I'm sure um, you, you would know more because uh, you're studying about um, psychology. So there are different levels of um, um, how the Buddha could, uh, could give an antidote to Kisakonami. And, and he, you know, like Venerable Banyadipa said, he, he knew about that. And therefore, you know, just saying, by saying that, okay, I have the medicine. The medicine that he could give, actually, that actually cures Kisakoromi <laughs> at the end, right? Uh, to the extent that she became uh, Arha, right? So um, in that kind of assessment, you can see that, okay, uh, being skillful means or, or being skilled in terms of uh, the speech or the, in terms of the methodology, so you can kind of analyze it in different ways. Um, the medicine, he only said that, yes, I have the medicine. Yes, he did have a medicine, <laughs> right? 
uh, he did have the medicine, um, in that it's, it kind of cures Kisakoremi's wish to bring the, the life back, right? So, so again, so if you are analyzing that, then I would go step by step. Okay, what are the, uh, you know, um, uh, how, can, how can I um, analyze it from um, psychological point of view or how can I analyze it from uh, CLAP point of view? You know, that, that kind of step by step. And then you can actually write a very interesting and very nuanced uh, understanding about that episode in, in the Sutta. Uh. Mm. <laughs> now we are, you are discussing based on the fact that Buddha said this word like I dwell medicine. So maybe Buddha did not reply in that way. Maybe well, just, yeah. Just, yeah. Say, just find medicine and see what we can do. Uh, you have to ask uh, Chali uh, Pinya Thiri. So, <laughs> so in the text, not like that. Yeah, well. <laughs> 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 so, well, let me story, read the piece of the story. <laughs> I'm walking on it. That's correct. Cool. Uh, no, so. it's text. No, it's text. Chali Pinya Thiri, not country. No, I, that's why I, I have doubt on it. So, I have doubt on it. Maybe uh, Buddha did not reply in that way, maybe. Uh, like, I have medicine, just me say, medicine for Kisa God of me, maybe he, he replied in that way. But in the text mentioned is like, medicine for bringing his, his <laughs> life back. Um, to, to, begin to act as a lawyer, to attempt as a, as a lawyer for Buddha, when the Buddha said, I have medicine, he didn't mean medicine that would be made in out of that master seat. Mm. <clears throat> the medicine, as you can see, after the Giza couldn't exhaust it mm. in his search, when she came back, she asked for the right medicine. At that time, she asked for the right medicine, medicine for that lessness. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, she wouldn't be able to understand in her in state of mind. So she needs to, as Nirvana Tipa pointed out, uh, to experience that. Um, so that she came to realize the universality of her pain. Um, because at that moment, <clears throat> she was uh, so personalizing her pain that her pain was so unique to herself. But after him, uh, having gone through uh, the whole street, you know, that she came to realize. Um, I think she was asking for the, the, the wrong medicine. Mm. And mm. she came back to ask for the right, the right medicine. medicine. <laughs> and maybe the Buddha, when he said, I have medicine, he, he meant you know, the right medicine. Not the one she was asking for. But it wouldn't be possible to go into a debate with them. You're asking the wrong medicine. <laughs> Psychologically, that wouldn't be possible in terms of um, psychotherapy. Um, because what Giza could need was an acknowledgement of the pain. <clears throat> so the process of searching for the master said, was actually that process, the process of acknowledging, helping her to acknowledge um, hey, before that she was in Thai. Just like what he says, the Buddha, actually, he always says truthfully, facts, factual, yeah. and beneficial. But in terms of whether pleasing to hear, not really. At the right time, right place, and he would, he would yeah. really like give a harsh speech, you know, mm. say a harsh speech. I mean, for mm. obvious reasons. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Yes. So here we terms we terms with two things, like factual and beneficial, but not actually judgment. Mm. Yes, there's a there's a uh, article on that. Right. So so yes. Right speech is not always always gentle. Yes. 
Um, so, so, so that's one of the points that I, I, I kind of uh, try to raise here, is w what are the criteria to, to, to uh, kind of say that, okay, positive or right speech or, you know, however much we want to call it. So, so truth and then um, and uh, beneficial, whether, yes. Mm, mm, mm. Um, one thing that I, I really admire personally in terms of um, the, uh, the Buddha and, and is about his, um, his uh, quality to, to, to speak, to, uh, to stick to right speech or, or these kind of two things, the truth and beneficial. Uh, so, so that that quality is it's very kind of, you know, I, it's close to my heart. So do you think the Buddha will alter it? Stem from the Sutta we just discussed. Mm. Right. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, I don't, well, uh, here we are talking about the Buddha as, as, as in, you know, uh, kind of uh, historical as well as uh, the, the uh, Buddha hood, right? Not just, so, so I, I think it's uh, white light, I don't think it, it would, but then again, you then have a, have a uh, Buddhist traditions which embrace uh, the idea of uh, upaya, and, and how, you know, you can, uh, as you know more than me, that, you know, you can lure out the, the children by, by, by telling that, you know, come, come, I have twice here. So, so it's, you know, um, so th that kind of thing. So it's, it depends on, on um, which traditions you are also talking about as well. Uh, Right. So, from Tirawada point of view, and according to the uh, suttas, I don't think it's the Buddha uh, would have uh, told lies or white lies. Mm -hmm. So it's it's that, um, and it it's just a matter of how we write about these things as well, as a as a in an academic uh, kind of as a researcher. So. Okay. Any other? No? Okay. Right. So um, I think uh, we will uh, come to a, 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 an end. So thank you very much for coming and for the discussion. Um, I hope this was useful for Vanova Janenda. Uh, so, so uh, I actually, I, I kind of thought, okay, I, I, I'm going to do a lecture, and then so I ended up opening the lecture rather than kind of giving one-to-one -one <laughs> lecture. <laughs> okay, uh, shall we recite uh, Buddha Sasana Jiran? Buddha Sasana Jiran Data 2. Boda Sasanan Jidan Data Two. Boda Sasanan Jidan Data Two. Sa Sa. <laughs>